Okay, so today we're going to look at adding a S video to um, a Model 1 Mega Drive or a Genesis for uh, US viewers. So what I've already done with this one is I've already removed all the screws and everything from it so it's just going to come apart. Um, they are fairly easy to take apart, just a few screws underneath and then you're able to um, pop the lid off. Um, you've got to be careful when you're taking the lid off that the LED which is actually mounted up in the lid um, has a couple of legs that you sort of need to straighten up and then you can slide uh, this connector off. Um, I've also gone through and um, unscrewed all the shielding and that from it so I'll just pop that out of the way. Right, now there's two main areas that um, we sort of need to work on. I'm just going to bring you in a little bit closer here. Okay, um, the first one that we need to work on is the um, video processor which is actually underneath this heat shielding. Um, if you're going to solder to the top of the processor then you need to remove all this shielding um, and you've got to be very careful because um, you don't want to damage these while you're removing all the shielding but um, I'm actually going to be soldering underneath the motherboard so that can stay there. Um, the other thing we're going to do is a lot of people when they do this modification they um, tap into the sound from the headphone jack. The problem with that though is that um, it's already amplified by that point so if you turn your sound up too high um, on a headphone slider then it's going to start putting out distorted sound. Um, so what I've chosen to do and what I usually do for these is I actually tap straight into the sound chip um, and that way it comes out as an unamplified version of it, like a line out if you will. Um, so that way if you're going to plug this into your stereo on that it's nice and clean and you can use the amplifier on your stereo to um, do all the hard work. So the sound processor, if you find your headphone jack, um, is actually right here, just in next to the power switch. Now I have seen on the net, although I haven't seen any myself, where apparently sometimes these chips are missing or it's slightly different and um, that's why it's always important to sort of know, especially if you're going to be looking on Google or looking at some other tutorials and that to um, get some help as to what version motherboard you have. In this particular one, um, it's marked here, so we can see, if I just pop in a little bit closer, uh, right there, so this is a power motherboard and this is um, version 4. There's heaps of different versions of these motherboards, they're all slightly different. Um, the most, well the biggest and most important difference is sometimes they use um, different video processes in them so um, the pins and the way I'm going to be wiring this up may not apply so just check that out. Um, this particular machine has one of the Sony encoders in it um, and I'm not sure if it's just in under here and um, if you're looking carefully um, you won't be able to see it probably on the camera there but um, if you're looking carefully you'll actually be able to see Sony and the model number printed on top of it and you can actually check that before you start if you don't want to remove all this. So as I said before I've already removed the screws of this motherboard so um, I'll be able to lift this out. Um, what you do need to be careful of is that, um, there's a screw hidden underneath the headphone socket so you need to lift that out and you'll find a screw in under there so make sure you remove that and also on the rear of the board you need to pop this AC um, input out and just very carefully lift it out and just like with the um, Mega Drive toes you've got to sort of make sure that the back end is lifted out first because you don't want to get um, your um, gamepad connectors caught up in the plastic because it is, well they're getting quite old now and it'll be, um, you don't want to break it. Okay, so just next to our um, volume slider here, you will find this little wee Sony chip. This is our sound processor that we're going to be soldering to. And what we need to solder to is pins 1 and pin 8 um, to get our left and right sound out. Um, I'm not going to grab a ground from anywhere near there at the moment because later on when I do the S-Video mod I'm going to bring a ground through from that. and. 
these machines all use a common ground so your composite video your left and right audio can all share the same ground and that's fine it's not a problem um, whenever you're working with cable um, make sure that um, when you've got your bare wires splayed out like this that you just give them a bit of a twist so that they're all going to join together and hold up together because what you'll find will happen when you go to solder them is that they'll um, push you out and sort of go over, go all over the Okay, place. so looking at a chip, um, if you can see down in here, there's a lot of wee indentation. That always indicates uh, where pin 1 is. And for the Sony chip that we're going to be using here, we need to solder to pins 1 and pin 8 um, to get our line level output. So all we need to do is flip the board over. This is looking at the bottom of it. So we've got pin 1 is here and pin 8 is down the other end, just there. Okay, so let's get some soldering. Now what's always a good idea, and I've, as I've said before, is that your melting temperature of old solder is um, a lot higher than new solder so when you're going to add something to these it um, never hurts to put a little bit of heat onto it and actually put some fresh new solder on and you'll find it'll melt in much easier so we'll just add a little bit of solder in like that and then we'll just do a pin 8 and you'll just see it melt down it's all ready to go and with our wires uh, now they've all been sort of twist it up um, and it's also a good idea to quickly put some solder onto them which is called tinning them and because there's a lot of cables and ah sorry there's a lot of other connections in this area you want to make sure that your um, wires are nice and short Okay, so now we'll just solder in our wire. And just do the same again. And there we go, nice and easy. So that's our left and right audio, and now we just need to pick up our ground from uh, from the East video mod that we'll do in a moment, and then we'll be hooking things up. So we'll be back in a sec. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is do our connections for our uh, composite video and also our S video. So this is just looking in underneath the uh, the heat shield, and you can see that the um, Sony chip sitting in there. And to do this mod, we need to tap into pins 20 for uh, the composite video, and we need to pop, uh, tap into pin 16 and pin 15. Um, we use 16 as our luma out, and 15 as our chroma out. So all you need to do is find that chip, and then um, if you actually look carefully, you can just see it. Uh, pin 1 is actually marked for you there and just like the audio chip um, you'll see that there's a little indentation into here as well to give you a bit of a hand and then you just need to flip it over and find pins 20, 15 and 16 on the um, bottom of the chip and solder onto those so we'll flip it over and find it so counting along 13, 14, 15 is what we use for our chroma so just solder that onto there and pit 16 is what we're going to use for our luma. Slide this along a little bit. And just pin 20 is what we need to solder to. So what we'll, all we need to do is just pick somewhere nice and convenient um, and 
just add a bit of solder to it so it's nice and easy to solder to and use that. So I'm just going to pick somewhere in a strip because it's nice and easy. And just move that over a little bit so you can see. As you can see I'm just heating it up and adding some new solder to it. And there we go. So we've got our ground in, and we've also got our three wires. And um, what I'm going to do a little bit after on is I'll um, just come back and I'm actually just going to put a bit of um, hot glue over the top of these, or you could use some insulation tape if you like, just to insulate it to make sure that none of these uh, joints are going to touch any of the metal framework underneath and cause a short. So next thing we need to do is build our little video amplifier circuit. Okay, so now we need to build ourselves a little uh, amplifier circuit. Because the problem is, is that with these uh, Mega Drive ones and also the Master System one, um, the encoder doesn't have quite enough juice. So all we need to do is uh, get ourselves one of these and um, I'll put the model number up on the screen there for you so you can find them. And um, this is just a little transistor and um, all we need to do is on this particular leg we need to feed 5 volts into it and I'll see if I can't bring you in a little bit closer. We need to put 5 volts in on this leg, we need to put our Luma signal in, which is our um, pin 16, it needs to get tapped into the centre leg, and then pin this pin here, which I've just bend out, has a 27 ohm resistor attached to it, and then that goes off to our S-Video socket. Okay. One other thing you need, apart from your Chroma, Luma, Composite and left and right stereo is you also need to get a 5 volt feed because the circuit that we build um, to amplify the Chroma and Luma, uh, in particular actually the Luma signals, um, it needs 5 volts. So 5 volts is nice and easy to find. Um, you have these wonderful little devices here on the side and basically um, on these, um, this pin here, uh, can we see all right? Yep, the very end pin on either one um, has 5 volts on it. Um, what you can do um, to be sure, and it, it is always a good idea to be sure, um, you don't want to grab the other side and get 10 volts, is um, just get a multimeter and um, measure from this ground board and then just measure your DC voltage on any of the pins. But to save you a bit of hassle, um, and to give you a point of reference, um, here's the um, AV connector at the rear and the factory uh, RF unit. So if that's there, then go to this pin on the side, the far, far side pin over here that I'm touching. So, and we're just going to again solder to the bottom of the board. Okay, so with our board flipped over, um, you've got a choice really. You can either solder to here. Um, or you can solder to this one here on the end as well. Um, and as a point of reference, as you can just see in each of the picture there, it's not far away from where we've just been soldering uh, onto the video chip for our Chroma, Luma and Composite. Okay, so again, I'm just going to dob a little bit of solder onto this already, just so we can get into it nice and easily. Okay, and we'll just solder that on to the, onto our pin. Right, and that's ready to go.